Carla here from the Net Nix podcast. Today is episode 11 of my podcast, and today is June 16th, and it is Thursday, and it is the day after registration opened for Knit City. Um, I would like to talk a little bit about that later on in the episode, but uh, you can find me on Ravelry as uh, Knit Nix, and that is Knit hyphen Nix, K-N-I-T hyphen N-I-X, and you can find me on Instagram as Carla Jean. And I'd be happy if you friended me or followed me or all of those things on those social media pieces. Um, pretty exciting. I have, uh, it's been two weeks since my last uh, episode, which was right after the Okanagan Knitting Retreat. And I'm finding that if I podcast every week, I don't have a lot to say, but I think I've gathered a lot to say in my little half hour podcast that I'd like to share with you. Um, let's start with Knit City. Last night, which was June 15th at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, they opened the registration for um, the uh, Knit City um, retreat. Well, it's not really a treat, it's, I guess it's Knit City. It's a conference. And literally at 7.01 Pacific time, which would be 8.01 here because I'm Calgary and we're an hour later, um, the classes were filling up it was like within minutes. I got on as soon as I, right when the, my alarm went off, I got on and I was panicking because they didn't open the cart. I, I guess you, you can see a cart, you can add the different things to your cart and I was starting to panic and I... I was at my knitting retreat last night and I'm rudely with my phone trying to log on um, to it, to do it and uh, it wasn't coming up and it wasn't coming up and finally I saw add to cart. So within probably three minutes of, of the opening, I was signed up for three things. Um, I'm excited to say that on the Saturday morning at 10 o'clock, I'm uh, signed up to do the shawl shapes class with Susan B. Anderson, my little, one of my faves. I love her and I'm excited to meet her and take that class. And then I'm also signed up for the keynote speaker in the evening, which is Stephanie Pearl McPhee. She's speaking in, in the evening and that's a quite a, a large group thing. There's a lot of people who are invited to, or who could sign up for that. And then in the uh, next morning on the Sunday at 10 a.m., I'm signed up to take Spindling 1.0. I think that's what it's called. Not spinning, but spindling 1.0. And the person who's offering that, I think her name is Diana. It starts with a T TW. Anyway, I'll put that along the bottom here. And she is a fiber artist who is specializes in spinning and creating yarn. And we're gonna, I'm going to be making my own yarn. And if you recall my very first episode, if you're actually a, a returning viewer, um, in my first episode, I said that I got a drop spindle for Christmas. And I had have, I'm kind of intimidated to try it. Well, I get to um, try it on in October. So October 1st and 2nd in Vancouver, myself and my girlfriend Carmen and my other girlfriend from Vancouver, Joy, and a bunch of gals from the Okanagan Knitting Retreat. We're all going to meet up in uh, Vancouver and take in some of the events there. So that's exciting. There's also a marketplace, and I'm sure I'll be checking out the different uh, indie dyers. Mm -hmm. I know my friend uh, Glenda from Wet Coast Wools has a booth there. So those of you who are interested in her little shop and all the stuff that she sells, she'll have a booth there. So hi, Glenda and Bernadette from Wet Coast Wool's podcast. I'll be seeing you at Knit City. Also, I am taking the class, the uh, shawl shape class with Susan B. Anderson. Um, Little Fairy from this uh, Twitch and Stitch podcast is also gonna take that with me, so I'll see her in that. And her sister, Scylla, I think is doing Grok the Sock, I'm not sure, as well as our friend, um, Vicki. She's taking Grok the Sock and the Stephanie Pearl McPhee. And I know that Shannon's going, but I'm not sure if she's taking any of the, well, she mentioned she's not taking a class, so we'll just see her at the marketplace. And who else am I gonna see there? Anyway, all the people that I've met at retreat 
and along the way, oh, and I think uh, the grocery girls, I, I saw on Instagram last night that both um, Jody and Tracy are taking courses, and I do believe they are actually both in my Shawl Shapes class as well. So hi, you two. I'll see both uh, Jody and Tracy at Knit, uh, Knit City in Vancouver, October 1st and 2nd. Yay! I got my hotel room at the atrium across the street. There, sorry for the interruption, I had to grab the phone. My husband was calling me and I'm filming on my iPhone, so sorry about that. Anyhow, I did get my hotel room across the street and I'm, you know, pretty excited about flying out from Calgary to Vancouver and having a weekend uh, with like-minded knitters and hanging out with some friends that I've, new friends that I've made and some old friends that I knew from high school. So, hi Carmen, enjoy. <laughs> Anyhow, let's move on. Let's talk about, um, let's talk about uh, finished objects. So that'll be really quick because there's nothing finished. <laughs> so I do have a finished object. <laughs> I thought I didn't, but I do. So I am going to share the one finished object that I have. It's the Simple Shawl, and I think it's by Judy Hunter, if I'm not incorrect. And I made it from the yarn that was gifted to me by my friend Leslie. So Leslie, I didn't want to leave this episode and not have, sorry, I'm going to correct me a little bit, and not have something, or not mention this. So uh, here it is. This is my Simple Shawl. It's made out of a skein of um, DK weight, I believe. It's on 100% merino, and look at this. This is what I love about this shawl. It's long enough to make like a kerchief. See if I can get it a little bit lower. But look at this, isn't that the prettiest? And isn't that gonna be a great little addition to fall, my fall outfit? It acts like a little kerchief. It's a little shawlette, but look at this, Pico Edge. And I blocked it, first time really uh, blocking a shawl. Anyway, I'll bring, I'm cutting my head off. But anyway, I just wanted to share my finished object. So thank you, Leslie, for the gift, and I made it into something very wearable that I will share. Okay, so that segment is done, and now we'll move on to um, works in progress. And I have a lot, and I've made some progress, but not a ton, but you'll see. Um, let me see here. Well, I have my Drakenfell shawl, and I have all I have done on that is one more six, I'm gonna move my camera a little bit here. There we go, so it's not cutting my head off. There we go. All I have is one six uh, row repeat done. So I've only added a few more stitches. I'm almost finished this color. This one first ball of the bone color. Anyway, it's beautiful and I'm loving it but I haven't made a lot of progress on it. I've just added a few more rows of purple. So I just added like, you know, a couple, just a couple stripes, maybe three stripes, because I think um, each stripe is two rows. So really I've only added three stripes to my track and film. But face it, it's, it's June and it's warm outside. And the only time I actually did this is when it was kind of rainy and cloudy out and I felt like having something warm on my lap. So I haven't done a lot of, um, work on it but it's coming along beautifully and I will I do plan on working on it uh, when I go away this summer in a couple weeks I'm going to Palm Springs for two weeks so I will hopefully will do a whole bunch of knitting because I'll be finished school and I won't have a lot of demands on me because I'm doing a solo trip I do that every summer to Palm Springs to just uh, kind of regroup I run a lot and I eat well drink a little bit of wine, hang out at the pool, and knit. So it's not like the perfect holiday. <laughs> Anyhow, so that's the Drakenfels. Haven't done much on that, so I'll put that one away. And maybe next time, let's see, next time, yes, I think my next podcast will be from Palm Springs, or maybe not. I'm not sure. We'll see. We'll see how when I podcast next. But yes, maybe not. Maybe I'll get one more in before I go. But anyway... So that's the Drakenfels. Um, I am working on, uh, last time an acquisition I had was Prairie Dye, uh, Prairie Dye Studios uh, Overcast, and I made a beautiful cake out of it. 
That was in my acquisitions last podcast. And I have cast it on, and I'm doing a vanilla sock using Susan B. Anderson's vanilla sock pattern. But look at that. Look at how that is, you know, knitting up. Look at the colors in that. It's absolutely beautiful. And, uh, of course, I'm using something that everybody is trying to use these days and they're really challenged by, but are the 9-inch cirques. And those, when I... When I knit my socks, I most often knit most of my sock on 9-inch cirques. I knit till I get to the heel flap, and then I switch and leave half of my uh, stitches on my 9-inch, and then do my heel flap with two double points, and then I pick up the gusset stitches with two more double points, so I totally get rid of the 9-inch cirque until I finish the gusset. And then when I get back to uh, the... 64 stitches that I had after finishing the gusset, I switch back to the nine inch cirques, finish the foot till I get to the toe, and then I move slowly back into the double points to finish off the toe. So um, people say, how do you knit socks on nine inch cirques? Well, I don't do all of it on nine inch cirques, only the straightaways, only from here to the heel flap and from the gusset to the toe do I do the nine inch cirques, but it's fast because you're not messing with needles. You just keep going and going and going, kind of like the Energizer Bunny. So I love that. So those are a work in progress. And that is, again, Prairie Dye Studios, um, Overcast, and Susan B. Anderson's How I Make My Socks. Free pattern on, on her blog. And I'm doing a course with her. Yay! I'm so excited. I'm a little bit starstruck. I love that lady. She's got such talent. She's a designer. She's a knitter. She's a mom. She's just, I just can really relate to her. So I'm pretty excited to be in her class in October. So that's one work in progress. And um, my next work in progress is my other sock. Now, I think I've done this sock before. And this is my Hermione's Everyday Socks on my Trekking XL German uh, yarn. And I don't know the colorway. The colorway is a number. So, um, it's, but <laughs> it looks kind of pregnant because I'm hiding the actual other ball of yarn in there because now I've moved on to the heel flap and I'm using double points. You see, this is where I'm finished. I stopped at the blue and then I've picked up some blue yarn to do the heel and I've done the top. And so I'm moving on to blue doesn't exactly match the blue that's in the sock yarn, but it's pretty darn close. And I will complete the heel flap and the heel turn, and then I will go back to knitting the blue. And it'll you'll see, I'll show you what it looks like here. See, it's not perfect, but there is the blue of the uh, yarn, and there's my blue of my, uh, that's my extra yarn. And the, this heel is my first attempt at Eye of the Partridge heel. It's pretty cool. It's, not, it's kind of a modified one, but because of how it fits into the, to the gusset there. So it's uh, interesting. I'm having a little bit of a challenge with it, but it's a learning experience, right? Anyway, so these socks, hopefully by next podcast, I will totally have finished them. I'm just doing the second heel flap now, so I've made quite a lot of progress on those. So that's that, and this is that. Oh, and here's a little project that I started, and this is not really a project. This is more of an experiment. Um, at school, I do a, a little knitting class with my students, and um, I, as a year-end project, I'm giving them, not all of them, only the ones who are real my real avids and probably my older students. Well, not really my older students. Well, they're all grade five, six, and a couple junior high kids. But um, I'm giving them, see these circular needles? These are, I think, 12 inch circs. And I bought them off of eBay. They're not expensive. They are bamboo ends. And the cord, if you can see if I can pull it out, is a plastic cord. And these were really, really inexpensive. And I got, I think, Lots of different sizes, and I think they average about a dollar a pair. So I'm, what I'm trying to do is get in the knitting over the summer. So I'm creating, um, I'm not creating, I'm giving them 
a basic pattern that basically has them going round and round and round. And I wanted to show them an example of what you can do with these needles and some yarn. I just I just totally made this one up. I cast on six, this is all scraps too. I cast on 60 stitches with a real chunky yarn. It's a single ply, but it's kind of like, what do they call this, roving I think. And I cast on um, 60 stitches and I did two by two ribbing. And in the knit part, I knit into the back so it kind of pops the ribbing out a little bit. And then I did this pattern. I just looked online and got a, a, a 10 stitch repeating pattern. So I did that six times, that wavy pattern, and then I moved on to the white, and then I did a little bit of different color work here, and now I'm moving up to some triangles in the top. Anyway, I just wanted to show them that they too, with their little gift that I'm giving them, and some yarn that I had donated, they too can make a hat over the summer. So that's just something I'm not, it's not a hat I would wear. This is probably a child, probably a nine-year-old maybe could wear this. Maybe if it's small enough, maybe my grandson could have it. But it's just something I was playing with because I wanted the students to know that they too, with the little needles that I gave them, can make a hat. So that's that. I don't know if I'll totally finish it. It's not really a, it's more of a, more of a sample or a, it's not really a project. It's more of a sample or an, an example to show the students. While I was at um, the Okanagan Knitting retreat one of the ladies there was working on a scrap blanket using fingering um, sock yarn but instead of doing squares she was just using um, I think she said she cast on 220 stitches and in fing in fingering or sock weight yarn and basically she was knitting until her yarn ran out and just in garter stitch and she was, instead of cutting the ends and working the ends, she was doing a Russian join. Now, if you look that up online, which I was, I'd never heard of before, and I looked it up, and basically you take your yarn and you do a loop and you, and you sew the end back into itself so it makes like a, yarn, a yarny loop. And then you take your new yarn that you're gonna use and you put it through the loop, and then you take a needle and s slip it back onto itself. So basically, your yarn has a join that looks like this with the ends work back into themselves. So I started a little project. I don't know if I'm going to continue with it. I'm just was just sort of playing. I started a similar, no, it's on a big circular needle, but you can see that I have done exactly that. I have um, done some Russian joins to join up my scrappy yarns. I don't know if I can find one here for you. But anyway, I just thought I would see whether I wanted to do a blanket. Here's the ends there, so I'm halfway through a row. But it basically, it's using your, uh, I'm not using sock yarn, I'm using um, DK weight, I think this is. Maybe a light worsted DK weight. And I'm using all my scrappy uh, uh, wool yarns, merino. Most of them have merino and nylon content or, or are superwash merino. But I'm just using up all my ends and I'm hoping to see going to play a little bit and maybe I will create a blanket as well. So I'm not sure if I'm going to continue with that, but it's just more, again, more of an experimenting, experimenting in a playtime that I was doing. So that's that. So that's in my, well, that was living in my little you so-and-so bag that I got as a prize. I won her, I think, thousand follower um, little giveaway and it's a little pug bag, kind of a cute little bag. So that's that, Strachenfell and that. And I think that is all my works in progress. Yes, that is all my works in progress. So I'm gonna move on quickly to my acquisitions and I'm gonna make this a very quick uh, podcast because I need to, <laughs> it's the end of the year, I'm a teacher and I am half time and normally I work full days and today and for the rest of the year, I'm working half days so that I can support the provincial achievement tests and all the exams and all the things that, because I'm kind of needed every day. So I thought I would work half time till noon till the rest of the year. I've got a pretty flexible schedule, so I was able to do that. So it is afternoon this afternoon. And if I'm going to get this up and on to uh, YouTube, I better, you know, cut it short 
and uh, move on. So anyway, I have a few acquisitions or fix. So the fix. And what have I got? I have a few things. Our knitting guild, I belong to the uh, Gilly Hook Knitting Guild here in Calgary. And we celebrated, like I said in my last episode, our 25th um, anniversary of being a guild. And we had a dinner and the guild um, asked Sea Turtle yarn, Fiber Arts to create a yarn in celebration of their 25th. So I explained it in a previous podcast that uh, the base is silvery gray for the silver 25th. There is some kind of a pink color in it to represent the Alberta wild rose, which is our provincial flower. And there's kind of a blue tealy color that's to represent the sky, the Alberta, because Alberta is known for its blue skies, provincial flower. And there's kind of a blue tealy color that's to represent the sky, the Alberta, because Alberta is known for its blue skies. So she calls, she called this yarn, uh, it's on her Ridley sock weight. And it's called Alberta Dreams. And this is the yarn that she created. And it's silvery. And it's got uh, pops of that rose-colored fuchsia pinky color. And then she's also got some pops of the um, kind of teal blue. And it again, it is Sea Turtle Fiber Arts. And she is calling this colorway her Alberta Dreams colorway and it is 80% superwash merino 20% nylon and there's 420 yards and the cool thing uh, it, all of us who went there also got a gift bag we also got a coordinating plain gray one from her she's calling it a silver to go with so now we have two skeins so I could make myself a gorgeous shawl of some sort with this. So I have not sure what I'm doing yet. I'm taking that shawl shapes class from Susan B. Anderson in October. Maybe I will use this because she tells you to bring some nice uh, fingering weight, some sh yarn to make a shawl. So maybe I'll use this. I'm not sure yet. So I got that. And then I have friended a young girl in, or I don't know how young she is. I, I, I hope somebody calls me young. But anyway, this lovely lady in Montana, she has octopus yarns. And I don't know her name on Ravelry. And I don't know her name on, um, on Instagram. Yes, she's on definitely on Instagram. Anyway, she's called Octopus Yarns. She has an Etsy shop. So she's Octopus Yarns on, on Etsy. And if you want to get a hold of her, she's octopusyarns at gmail.com. And I bought from her a sock weight that is hand dyed. It's a seasonal colorway. And she does it in small batches. And this is one of her spring 2016 colors. It's called Pops of Color. And I thought that was pretty. I'm really actually falling for a lot of yarns that have a lot of light color in it with, with, for summer with pops of other colors. Now there's blues and pinks and reds and greens. You can see in here and oranges. It's really cute. It's really kind of, it, it kind of reminds me of like maybe jelly beans or pop rocks or something kind of a summer candy, but it's beautiful. It's uh, made out of, what is it? I think she told me it's not on here, I don't think. But there's uh, 463 yards. Oh, here it is. The fiber content is 75% merino and 25% nylon. So it's really squishy and nice. And it's going to make me some lovely socks. So thank you, Octopus Yarns. And then on today is Thursday. So not yesterday, but the day before on Tuesday uh, in the afternoon. No, actually Tuesday. I had the day off. And I went with my girlfriend Carmen and my girlfriend Joy from Vancouver. And we kind of went around and did um, all of the Calgary uh, yarn shops. Well, not all of them, but a lot of them. 
we managed, we started out and we went to Gina Brown's and we just browsed there. And then we went next door for lunch at Simple Simon Pieman, which is delicious. You know, they make, if you ever go to the Calgary Farmer's Market, they're there and they sell little individual pies and they're yummy. So we had that for, I had that for lunch. And then we carried on and we went to, actually before lunch, we went to next door, was Pudding Yarns. It was Gina Brown's, then Pudding Yarns. And I'd never been to that store. And it's a beautiful little store. And it's just downtown Calgary, 17th Avenue, just off 17th Avenue downtown. And Simple Simon Pie is just next door to there. So that's where we had lunch. And then I didn't, neither of us bought anything from those first two. We just kind of shopped and browsed a bit. And then we went on to um, a yarn shop called, and my favorite, <laughs> The Loop. And I had gotten some Loop bucks at um, the Fiber Shindig earlier in I guess in April, the spring. So I had some money there. And I said to my girlfriends, both Carmen and Joy, I said, pick out a sock yarn because I want to buy you some sock yarn. So they picked out some sock yarn. I don't have it here to show you. And then I picked out a skein of some uh, Cascade yarns, Cascade 220 in this color because back in, at Easter time, I went I was in Palm Springs and I bought these two yarns. Remember, I don't know if you if you follow me or if you've seen other episodes. I bought this and I'm going to use this. I'm thinking of doing um, another Melanie Berg shawl after I finish the Drakenfels and I just thought this was kind of fun. It's kind of summery. So I'm going to do combine those three and do maybe the the Spice Market one or maybe another Drakenfels because that would be really pretty in a Drakenfels as well. So that, and I think, oh, and one more thing. I mentioned um, in a previous episode about sock yarns that I bought from an Etsy shop. <laughs> I, I told you about it, but I don't think I actually ever showed you it. Look at this. Now here's the this. This is all different colorways of um, opal sock yarn that I bought. And this lady has, she's her Etsy shop comes in and out and anyway, I bought all of this yarn. There was actually, I have two, four, six, eight, ten. Plus I have an extra one in there from another previous buy. But my niece and I recently shared a um, a lot. She sells them in 100, they're 100 gram balls and she sells them in 10 um, parcels of 10. Uh, and I stuck in, there's 11 in that one, but there was 10. And uh, the first time I bought it, I think it was about, $70, but her she's up to price slightly, but still including shipping and everything. 10 balls of opal sock yarn cost $90 Canadian, and that includes all the shipping. Now that is one steal of a deal, and they're all variegated. Um, some are self-striping, some are just pops of color. Beautiful, and yeah, so that was on Etsy. And now I don't can't remember the name of her shop, but if you went on to Etsy and searched opal sock yarn, Again, she doesn't go on all the time. She kind of, her shop kind of opens and closes a lot. And she has some solids and she sells kind of more of a heavier DK weight one as well at 150 gram balls as well, different prices. I've also seen her sell some silks as well. Silk and merino, no. Silk and, I don't know what the, con but it, one of them has a lot of silk content. In it. Silk content in it. Maybe it's merino and silk and no nylon. Anyway, I didn't buy that one because I kind of went online and saw, read some of the reviews about silk sock yarn and that it doesn't have as much stretch to it and, and strength to it, but whatever. My sister bought some and she said it doesn't feel the same and I like the feel of a merino and uh, nylon sock yarn. But anyway, that is my fix, my acquisitions. And um, finally, I just want to say a few thank yous. First of all, if this is your first time tuning in, thanks for coming. Uh, thanks for coming and finding me on on uh, YouTube. If you're returning, thanks so much for coming back. I'm sorry I don't have anything too exciting. Um, I was talking to Leslie from YYC Knits, and she said she was going to join me for an episode here, but it's because of the craziness of the school year and all. She's not joining me today, but she will in the next little while. Maybe she'll be in my next one before I take off to Palm Springs. Um, thanks to all my friends who are signed up with me to go to Knit City. 
And then finally, thanks to all my knitting friends, uh, I have never met such a kinder, more positive group of people than the knitting community. Uh, that includes all the people I met at Okanagan Retreat and all the people that I meet at Guild and here in Calgary. And of course, my longtime friends uh, that I've known from knitting and my sister. I mean, knitting is such a great way uh, to spend uh, time. It's a stress reliever and it's a creative outlet. And I just am so great, very grateful that I found it and that I have it. And in my retirement years, and I hope to do a lot of knitting and creating. So anyway, have yourself a great couple weeks. I hope you come back and see me in a couple weeks. And take care of yourself. Uh, give your family a hug. And we'll see you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>